हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू वाओ वाई एस दिस इज द इलेवंथ पार्ट ऑफ द अप्रैल 2023 करंट अफेयर्स एंड इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू कवर द साइंस पोर्शन ऑफ योर मैगजीन बिफोर मूविंग फॉरवर्ड फॉरवर्ड आई वांट टू टेल यू अबाउट आवर इनिशिएटिव इन दिस इनिशिएटिव वी आर गोइंग टू कवर विजन मंथली मैगजीन फ्रॉम अप्रैल ट्वेंटी टू फेबर ट्वेंटी द होल मैगजीन विल बी समराइज इन फिफ्टी पेजेज दैट इज वन थर्ड ऑफ द टोटल लेंथ ऑफ द ओरिजिनल मैगजीन एंड यू विल बी प्रोवाइडेड वीडियो लेक्चर्स अलॉन्ग विद इट This all is available at rupees five ninety nine rupees only. To enroll in the course, you can directly pay through this QR code and send us the payment receipt on Wow India IS at the gmail dot com, or you can subscribe for the first edition that is free of cost for all through the link uh, provided under the video. Now let's move on to the let's move on to the first article. In science and technology, the first article is Indian space policy. so the indian space policy has been released has been approved by the government and what is the significance of this policy it will help in fostering innovation and through public private partnership so it is focusing on innovation as well as also engaging the private par- uh, pr- private partners in the in the space development programs it will also facilitate technology transfers and a vibrant space economy in the country it is the first ever comprehensive space policy this is very important it sets the stage for india's participation in the global space arena the next is it delineates specific roles for major stakeholders like what is the role what is the role that isro is going to play what is the role of in space nsil and dos also it will collaborate globally in addressing the global challenges like climate change disaster management etc so this the objective of space policy is to reform the space economy of the country and integrate it with the global economy and to make it a more advanced space economy for the country now what uh, now vision of space policy first of all it wo- it wants to augment it wants to augment the space capabilities of the country secondly it wants to create a ecosystem for effective implementation of space applications thirdly commercial presence it wants to develop a flourishing commercial presence in the space and peaceful exploration of the outer space it wants to use space as a driver for science for technology development and also want to stimulate public awareness and scientific quest lastly it want to also pursue the international relations with respect to space technology next is strategy outlined in the policy first of all the government is going to encourage r&d that is obvious then a regulatory framework that is predictable and stable will be formed and it will play, uh, it will create a level playing field for ngos through in space then next is promoting and supporting startups and using space for driver of the overall technology development in the country nge or non governmental entities they offer national and international space based communication services so that is their role establish and operate ground facilities for space objects operations like satellite control centers then remote sensing satellite systems then next is use of orbital resources to establish space objects for communication services over india and outside india so world over communication we are talking about here then next is commercialized technologies for enhancing and augmenting the satellite navigation communication and remote sensing then lastly engage in the commercial recovery of an asteroid so resource or space resource next department of space department of space is a nodal department for implementation of this indian space policy it will ensure availability of continuous and improved earth observation capability date and data to fulfill the national requirements also it will participate in international efforts by providing critical remote sensing satellite data for disaster management sustainable development goals etc also it will ensure a framework to ensure safe and sustainable space operations in compliance with the international space debris mitigation guidelines so this is important the next is in space in space the full form is indian national indian national space promotion and authorization center it will act as a single window agency for authorization of space activities by government and non government entities then it will work with industry to establish india as a preferred sp- service provider at the global level the space service provider i am talking about that 
then it will ensure a level playing field for the utilization of all facilities created using public expenditure and decisions of the in space shall be binding so it will be final and binding everyone has to agree to them it will also facilitate technology transfer of technologies developed by isro and it will also prescribe guidelines for liability of potential damages due to space activities so these will be the roles of the in space next new space india limited nsil it is responsible for commercializing space technologies and platforms created through public expenditure the operational part of isro mission will be moved to nsil service the space based needs of the user now next is isro isro comes under department of science before isro incospar was established in 1962 incospar means national indian national committee for space research then incospar was superseded by isro in 1969 and it was brought under department of science and in 1972 as a national space agency development and application of space technologies for various needs is the mandate of isro headquarters is in bengaluru and it has it by headed by a chairman who is the secretary of dos and chairman of the space commission next is significance of private participation in space this is important from your mains point of view also ki how the private players can be helpful in the space technologies now first of all focus on the r&d the approach will allow isro to concentrate on cutting edge research and development exploration missions and human spacecraft programs shift from supply driven model to demand driven model entry of the private sector into the end to end space activities enable to meet new demands in this sector then rapidly rising space industry indian space sector is projected to increase at the rate of 48 cagr compounded annual growth rate over next 5 years and reach a uh, reach and to reach a total sum of around for us dollar 50 billion that is important for you now we also want to enhance share in the global space economy now currently india is only 2% of the space economy which is much behind us and china then it will also promote innovation and indigenization of the technology so private public private partnership technology transfer these are going to help in sharing of resources knowledge expertise between the public and private sector and will also lead to innovation and indigenization of the technology then next is promote make in india obviously it is going to promote now private sector participation in space sector current status kya hai what is the current status so around 100 startups have been registered with isro and are working in closely with various domains in space sector india has more than 350 tech companies space tech companies in 2021 2022 vikram as india's first privately built rocket was launched so you have to remember this name under mission praharamb it was developed by skyroot aerospace then pslv production nsil and hindustan aeronautical limited have exchanged mou for production of pslvs lnt is partnering in this so these are the some these are some initiatives with respect to private sector in the space technology what are the other measures other measures apart from nsil and in space other instruments include indian space association it was launched in 2021 as an apex non profit industrial body industry body working towards successful exploration collaboration and development of private and public space industry in the country so objective is to develop a private and public space industry in country it will undertake policy advocacy engage with operate engage and operate with all stakeholders act as a catalyst for accelerating the exchange of knowledge technology of space space related domains next is antariksh corporation limited it is the marketing arm of isro it handles isro's commercial deals for satellites and launch vehicles with foreign countries last one is space seed space entrepreneurship and enterprise limited it is conceived as a competitive early stage encouragement program to start up and msmes in focus areas of interest of interest to isro so this was about india's space program india's space policy now next is lego india project so india is a lego india is a planned advanced gravitational wave observatory located in india as a part of worldwide network so lego india is a gravitational wave observatory that is located in india that you have to remember it was given approval in 2016 and will be completed by 
where is the location hingoli district maharashtra this you should remember department of energy and department of science are the funding agencies for it and it is a collaborative project in which lego laboratory of the us and indian research institutions are uh, are partnering partnering with each other what are the indian institutions first is department of atomic energy science and technology then us national science foundation then directorate of construction services and estate management mumbai inter university center for astronomy and astrophysics pune institute for plasma research gandhi nagar raja ramanna center for advanced technology indore so these are these are the institutions that are part of the lego india project now what is lego lego is a tool to detect the gravitational waves used by using laser interferometers what happens in it there are two 4 km long vacuum tubes which are arranged at right angle to each other with mirrors at the end light rays are released simultaneously in both the chambers and if one of if the grav if the if if light in one of the chamber is elong elongated that it means that it has been interfered by gravitational wave so that is the basic principle behind it we here detect phase difference which confirms the presence of a gravitational wave if there is a phase difference between the two between the two light rays then it means there is presence of gravitational waves where are the current lego facilities so in lego india will be the third observatory of its kind currently two widely separated installations within us are there first is hanford washington and other one is livingston luciana so these are the part of lego and this lego is very sensitive even through events like earthquake landslides even movement of trucks can produce false false reading so this is important now what are the sister facilities of lego one is in the what one is virgo virgo is a gravitational wave interferometer in italy it is a 3 km long and is funded by european gravitational observatory a collaboration of italian and french government then geo 600 it is 0.6 km or 600 m interferometer located near hanover uh, germany funded by german and british government then kagra it is japanese and a 3 km interferometer inside kayoma mine so these are the other initiatives with respect to detection of gravitational waves <coughs> this diagram you can study these are these are the two arms this is one arm and this is another arm this is arm number 1 this is arm number 2 from here the two waves the two light waves are released and these light waves travel and if there is interference of gravitational waves in between then when this right waves are going to re, uh, going to reach back there will be phase difference between the two waves and this phase difference is going to detect that whether the gravitational waves are present or not <coughs> now what are gravitational waves these are ripples in the space time caused by some most violent and energetic processes in the universe these are invisible and travel at the speed of light but that is 186000 miles per second or you can say 3.25 lakh kilometers per second then gravitational waves squeeze and stretch anything that comes in their path albert einstein predicted them in 1960 under his journal theory of relativity next is dark matter map it is the most detailed map of dark matter showing both lumpiness pieces of solid substances usually with no particular shape of the universe and rate at which the universe is growing they have created a map using a microwave detector of atacama cosmology telescope or act so this word act is important for you this word lumpiness is important for you and universe is growing now <clears throat> these the einstein's prediction in this theory are correct and related to the expansion of the universe this has been observed by the astronomers also they observed also the given sensitivity to the standard model of cosmology smc next is big bang theory it is the only model that is able to explain the existence of cosmic microwave background so cmb you have to remember this name cosmic microwave background it has been 
जस्टिफाइड बाय बिग बैंग थ्योरी बिग बैंग मॉडल अकॉर्डिंग टू दिस मॉडल द यूनिवर्स स्टार्टेड विद अ वेरी डेंस एंड हॉट फेज दैट एक्सपेंडेड एंड कूल्ड इट सेल्फ फॉर सेवरल थाउजेंड ऑफ हंड्रेड्स ऑफ थाउजेंड्स ऑफ ईयर्स द टेम्परेचर वॉज सो हाई दैट न्यूट्रल आइटम कुड नॉट बी फॉर्म मैटर कंजिस्टेड मोस्टली ऑफ द न्यूट्रॉन्स एंड चार्ज पार्टिकल्स नेक्स्ट इज आइंस्टाइन थ्योरी ऑफ रिलेटिविटी इट वॉज प्रोपाउंडेड इन नाइनटीन फिफ्टीन एंड ही कॉन्ट्राडिक्टेड आइजेक न्यूटन्स कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ स्पेस हु सॉ सॉ स्पेस एंड टाइम एज फिक्सड आइंस्टाइन सेट द स्पेस एंड टाइम आर नॉट फिक्सड स्पेस इज फ्लूड एंड मिलियबल दैट इट इज कैन बी ट्रांसफॉर्म्ड gravity is not a force that is the that is according to theory of relativity by einstein but rather a distortion of time and space so gravity is gravity gravity is the distortion of time and space tiny ripples are caused by colliding black holes right the next is cosmic microwave background radiation what is cmb gravitation pull of large heavy structures large heavy structures including dark matter wrap up the cmb radiation on its 14 billion year journey to earth cmb or fossil radiation is cool remnant of the first light left over of the big bang that could ever travel freely throughout the universe the cmb lights get deflected by dark matter just like a magnifying glass deflected that passes through it lumpiness measurements show that lumpiness of the universe is of the exact size as per the sm C next is expansion rate at which the universe is growing is it was just was just expected from our smc based on einstein theory gravitational lensing it is observed when recording the movement of the cmb it is a phenomenon in which light moving through a region of space wrapped by powerful gravitational fields travel in a curve until it emerges as a stretched out arc of the einstein ring gravitational lensing helps in detecting dark matter next is composition of universe unlike normal matter dark matter does not interact with electromagnetic force that you have to remember dark matter does not interact with electromagnetic force that means it does not absorb reflect or emit light making it hard to spot The scientists have been able to infer the existence of dark matter only from gravitational effect it seems to have on visible matter it seems to outweigh visible matter roughly 6 to 1 making up 27% of the universe astronomer fris zwicky zwicky you first used the term dark matter in 1930 now something about dark matter it is approximately 68% of the universe and appears to be associated with vacuum in the space it is distributed evenly throughout the new universe and not only in space but also in time it makes up 50% of the universe it includes earth sun and other stars and galaxies it is made of proton neutrons and electrons bundled together into atoms now einstein's prediction prediction in the theory of general relativity first of all he said motion in space concentration of mass and energy curve the structure of space and time affecting the motion of anything passing near it including light so mass energy and space time they affect the motion of anything that passes through it even uh, it is light he expected a beam of star light would bend when passing through sun's gravity expansion of universe he provided the mathematical framework for describing the structure and evolution of universe from its beginning 13.8 billion years ago into the future galaxies are moving away from each other he also predicted that universe is lumpy so these are the predictions of general einstein's theory of general relativity the next is national quantum mission so cabinet has given 60 6000 crores for this mission and in this mission we are going to uh, we we are going to harness the laws of quantum physics which describe the behavior of matter energy at the atomic and subatomic level now what can be the possible potential applications of this te- technology first is first of all is quantum computing using quit bits instead of binary bits second quantum simulations that is we are going to design com- uh, quantum computers for purpose of stimulating materials or chemical reactions for physical world then quantum communications uses qu- quantum bits typically photons of light transmitting data along 
ऑप्टिकल केबल्स इंक्लूडिंग टेक्नोलॉजीज लाइक क्वांटम की डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन एंड क्वांटम रैंडम नंबर जनरेशन देन क्वांटम सेंसिंग एंड मेट्रोलॉजी यूजेज इंडिविजुअल पार्टिकल्स सच एज फोटोन एंड इलेक्ट्रॉन सेज हाईली सेंसिटिव सेंसर्स एंड करंट टेक्नोलॉजीज रिलेटेड टू मेजरमेंट ऑफ फोर्स ग्रेविटेशन इलेक्ट्रिक फील्ड एक्सेट्रा ना अबाउट द मिशन इट इट फोकस इज अपॉन डेवलपमेंट ऑफ इको सिस्टम ऑफ क्वांटम टेक्नोलॉजी द इम्प्लीमेंटिंग एजेंसी इज डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ साइंस एंड टेक्नोलॉजी अंडर मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ साइंस एंड टेक्नोलॉजी द ड्यूरेशन इज फ्रॉम ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी थ्री टू ट्वेंटी थर्टी वन दिस यू शुड रिमेंबर ना वट इज अ टारगेट वी हैव टू डेवलप क्वांटम कंप्यूटर्स विद फिफ्टी टू वन थाउजेंड फिजिकल क्विट बिट्स इन एट ईयर्स सेटेलाइट बेस्ड सिक्योर क्वांटम कम्युनिकेशन बिटवीन ग्राउंड स्टेशन ओवर अ रेंज ऑफ टू थाउजेंड किलोमीटर विद इन इंडिया एंड विद अदर कंट्रीज एंड इंटरसिटी क्वांटम की डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन ओवर टू थाउजेंड किलोमीटर्स वट द एप्लीकेशन ऑफ दिस क्वांटम फिजिक्स फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल मैग्नेटोमीटर्स विद हाई सेंसिटिविटी इन एटोमिक एटोमिक सिस्टम्स एटोमिक क्लॉक्स फॉर प्रसिशन टाइमिंग कम्युनिकेशन एंड नेविगेशन डिसीजन एंड सिंथेसिस ऑफ क्वांटम मटेरियल सच एज सुपर कंडक्टर्स नोवल सुपर कंडक्टर स्ट्रक्चर्स एंड टोपोलॉजिकल मटीरियल्स फॉर फेब्रिकेशन ऑफ क्वांटम डिवाइसिस सिंगल फोटोन डिवाइसिस सोर्सिस और डिटेक्टर्स एंड एंटेंगल्ड फोटोन फोटोन सोर्सिस फॉर क्वांटम कम्युनिकेशन सेंसिंग एंड मेट्रोलॉजिकल एप्लीकेशन नेक्स्ट इज थीम्स इट इंक्लूड्स सेटिंग अप ऑफ फोर थीमेटिक हब्स टी हब्स इन टॉप अकेडमिक एंड नेशनल आर एंड डी इंस्टीट्यूशन इन द डोमेन क्वांटम कंप्यूटिंग क्वांटम कम्युनिकेशन क्वांटम सेंसिंग एंड मेट्रोलॉजी एंड क्वांटम मेटीरियल एंड डिवाइसिस की प्रिंसिपल सुपर पोजिशन इट इज द एबिलिटी ऑफ अ क्वांटम पार्टिकल टू बी इन मल्टीपल स्टेट एट द सेम टाइम अंटिल इट इज मेजर्ड एंड टेंगलमेंट इट रेफर्स टू अचुएशन इन विच टू और मोर क्वांटम पार्टिकल्स आर लिंक्ड इन सच अ वे दैट इट इज इम्पॉसिबल फॉर दैम टू बी डिस्क्राइब इंडिपेंडेंटली क्विट बिट्स जस्ट लाइक अ बाइनरी बिट अ क्विट बिट A basic unit of information in the classic computing is the quit bit, that is zero n, and the basic unit of information in quantum, and is the basic unit of information in quantum computing. Next is physical versus logical quit bits. A physical quit bit is a physical device that behaves as as a two-state quantum system, used as a component of the computer uh, system. For example, an atom of hydrogen existing in multiple energy levels. Next is logical quit bits. It is a group of physical quit bits working together to perform a computation. So this is the difference between physical quit bit and logical quit bit. Logical quit bit is a group of physical quit bits for a particular quantum calculation. Now what are the challenges to the mission? First of all, it needs sustained financing. Secondly, it needs developed research ecosystem. thirdly skill and education levels that is required here there are gaps in this skill and education levels then there is limited industry academia uh, linkage and poor research collaboration at the national and international level so these are the challenges for this mission next is your jupiter ic moons explorer or juice mission remember the name juice mission the european space agency has launched this mission and it is a 8 year long voyage through a rain 5 rocket or spacecraft now it will reach its destination in 2031 and it is the first large class mission in esa's cosmic vision 2015 to 2025 program so this mission you should know cosmic vision mission 2015 to 2025 and it is launched by esa Now it is the first time that ESA has sent a spacecraft beyond asteroid belt. It is a product of global cooperation between twenty three countries, academic institutions, and private companies. Now, what is the objective? It will go for a detailed observation about Jupiter and three large ocean bearing moons. Just remember it: large ocean bearing moons of it. What are the names? Ganymede, Callisto, and Europa. so it will analyze the weather magnetic field gravitational pull and other elements of these moons payload first is gala then magis and uvs gala is ganymede laser altimeter magis is moon and jupiter imaging spectrometer and uvs is uv imaging spectrograph etc now some facts about jupiter it is fifth from the sun largest planet jovian planet do not have solid surfaces it is the it has highest number of moons followed by saturn then it it has a faint ring system 
great red spot is there which is a giant storm bigger than earth which has raised for hundreds of years then rotation and revolution around the sun rotates around one about about every 10 hours and takes around 12 earth years to complete one revolution around the sun that is known as jovian year then ganymede 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 is the moon to have its own magnetic field this is important it has its own magnetic field it is icy and rocky and it has icy and rocky sea bottom also callisto it is the second largest moon of jupiter and third largest moon of our solar system it is heavily created surface of ice and rock it has the evidence of sur- sub surface ocean then europa it has a layer of ice and water on the top of a rocky and metal in- interior has only tenuous atmosphere of oxygen has smoothest surface of any known solid object now what are the other missions for the jupiter first is pioneer 10 it was by nasa in 1972 then voyage 1 and 2 by nasa 1977 galileo nasa 1989 ulysses nasa and esa 1990 juno nasa in 2011 and europa clipper nasa by is by expected by 2024 so these missions you should remember their names the question can come either on this uh, juice mission or on these missions then next, next is jupiter trojan asteroid nasa spacecraft lucy has captured the mission of jupiter trojan asteroid for the first time what are trojans trojans are also na- known as uh, ancient population of asteroid fossils they orbit sun in two loose groups with one group leading ahead of the jupiter in its path and the other trailing behind they are stabilized by sun and jupiter in the gravitational balancing act Lucy mission was launched in 2021 and it is the first spacecraft to study the trojans it is on a 12 year mission and will take close observations of the nine of jupiter's trojans two main belt asteroids along with that next is preparedness and resilience for emerging threats prept so it has been released by who so what is this it is an innovative approach towards improving disease pandemic preparedness it recognizes that same systems capacities knowledge and tools can be leveraged and applied for groups of pathogen based on their mode of transmission next pet provides for a platform for national regional and global stakeholders to collaborate to strengthen the preparedness then pet recognizes that there are three tiers of system and capacities relevant for pandemic preparedness and these are cross cutting all of all multi hazard relevant for group of pathogens are specific to a pathogen so these are the three tier system first of all cross cutting of all the multi hazards second relevant for a group of pathogen third one is specific to a pathogen it is done under the aegis of international health regulation ihr 2005 are legally binding of one the legally binding agreement of 196 parties including 194 members of who to build capability to detect and report potential public health emergencies worldwide the technical actions in pret, pret are mapped to the ihr core capabilities grouped according to five sub systems for health emergency preparedness response and resilience HEPR under WHO is a learning channel brings together resources for WHO national counterparts and partners to outline the process of developing national investment plans to apply for additional resources including pandemic fund resources PRET can also serve to operationalize the objectives and provisions of the pandemic accord which is currently being negotiated by WHO member now WHO as you know it is the united nations agency it has 194 members the objective is health to promote health keep world safe say serve as a vulnerable so that everyone everywhere can attain the highest level of health function is to expand universal health coverage direct and direct and coordinate the world's response to health emergencies and promote healthier lives from pregnancy care towards old age now next we come to news in short first one is rare earth metals Hyderabad based National Geological Research Institute has found a large deposits of 15 rare earth metals in Andhra Pradesh Ananthapur district this is important for you what are rare earth metal it is a group of seven silvery white soft heavy metals that occur together in the periodic table 
ग्रुप कंजिस्ट ऑफ यूट्रियम एंड फिफ्टीन लेंथनाइड एलिमेंट्स द नेम्स आर लेंथेनम सीरियम पैरासीमोडियम नियोडीनियम प्रोमीथियम समेरियम यूरोपियम गैलोडीनी गैलो गैडोलीनियम टर्बियम डिस्पोर्सियम होलमियम अरबियम थूलियम यूट्रबियम एंड ल्यूटीटियम दे आर ऑल मेटल्स हैव सिमिलर प्रॉपर्टीज एंड ऑफन ऑफन कॉजेज दैम टू बी फाउंड टूगेदर ऑन जियोलॉजिकल डिपॉजिट्स आर ई आर यूज इन हाई एड टेक्नोलॉजी डिफेंस एप्लीकेशन इलेक्ट्रॉनिक डिवाइस लाइक सेल फोन्स कंप्यूटर्स इलेक्ट्रिक वहीकल्स बिकॉज ऑफ द ल्यूमिनेसेंट एंड कैटालिटिक प्रॉपर्टीज रेड मड रेड मड इज अ टॉक्सिक बाय प्रोडक्ट ऑफ द एलुमिनियम एक्सट्रैक्शन फ्रॉम बॉक्साइट और यूजिंग बेयर्स प्रोसेस दिस इज इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर यू वट इज रेड मड दिस क्वेश्चन कैन बी आस्ट नेक्स्ट इट कंजिस्ट ऑफ आर ई और रेयर अर्थ मेटल and there are two strategies to re- recover uh, rare earth metal from red mud red mud first is only extracting res or extract all metals such as iron titanium and sodium including ree so these are the two methods used for extracting red uh, used for extracting rare earth metal from the red mud now this is a graph given in which which shows that world total uh, this is the amount of rare earth metal men- uh, in the world and most of which one third of which is in china then vietnam and brazil have a good amount of it then russia and india comes at the fifth level in uh, in abundance of the rare earth metals found in it in the country now next is blockchain project it it will explore the potential of web3 the project is titled as design and development of a unified blockchain form framework for offering national blockchain service and creation of blockchain ecosystem it is part of government's efforts towards realizing web3 as blockchain plays a crucial role in it so you should know about web3 also it will also facilitate creation of an open application programming interfaces for smooth integration provisions of the blockchain as service over distributed infrastructure bs what is blockchain as a service it is it refers to third party cloud cloud based infrastructure and management for the companies project can be launched in accordance with the objective of national strategy on blockchain 2021 launched by ministry of electronics and information technology it creates a trusted digital platform by evolving a national blockchain infrastructure what are the benefits it facilitates wider application of blockchain technology reduces cost of infrastructure for smaller companies promoting innovation and entrepreneurship enables better security compliance by ensuring supply chain traceability next is support for upgradation preventive repair and maintenance of equipment that is supreme launched by department of science and technology dst to provide financial support for repair upgradation maintenance retrofitting or acquiring additional attachments to increase the functional capability of capabilities of existing analytical instrumentation facilities the funding pattern will be 75 25 for all private and government owned institutions except for state funding institutions which will get 100% funding support under the scheme will be for 3 years Now next is PSLV Orbital Experimental Module 2 or POEM 2. It will carry out scientific experiment u- using POEM 2 in the PSLV C55 mission. Remember the name of the mission. It is dedicated mission of New Space India Limited which is an in- for the international satellite customers from Singapore. Now PSLV it is a four stage launch vehicle. First and third stage solid, second and fourth are liquid. NSIL is the commercial arm of ISRO for enabling national Indian industries to take up high technology space related activities. Now what are the main payloads launch that is TLOS2 it is an earth observation satellite to support satellite imaging requirements of Singapore government. Then Lumilite4 it is against Singapore's maritime navigation and benefit the global shipping community. Then mission for the first time will see solar panels powering PSLV's fourth stage for conducting month long experiment. So the fourth stage that is the liquid stage now it will be solar panel powered. PSLV includes PSLV orbital experimental module POEM2 platform for performing in orbit experiments using final stages of PSLV. POEM2 has a dedicated navigation guidance and control system which acts as a platforms 
brain to stabilize it with specified accuracy. Poem will derive its power from the mounted solar panels and a lithium ion battery that is important for you. So you have to remember this thing. You have to remember this. Then this also has to be remembered. This point is also important one. Then NSIL is the commercial arm of ISRO. And fourth and second stage are liquid for a PSLV. And this is the PSLV C55 mission. It is experimental one. Then next is tropospheric emissions of monitoring pollution or TEMPO instrument. Now we are TEMPO. It is NASA has launched this device to monitor air pollution from the space. So this is, you know, geostationary orbit. It is 35,786 kilometers above the equator. It has been launched. So it will give about great North America's uh, air quality. Next is electro electromagnetic ion cyclotron or emic waves. Now, Indian scientists have identified these emic waves in the Indian Antarctic Station Methri and studied its characteristics. Now, it is going to help in understand the impact of energetic particles in the radiation belt of the low orbiting satellites. What are these uh, emic waves? They are discrete electromagnetic waves observed in the Earth's inner magnetosphere. Plasma is the fourth state of matter along with solid, liquid and gas. Plasma is superheated matter, a gas with sufficient energy that the electrons are ripped away from the atoms to form an ionized gas. These waves are generated in equatorial latitudes and propagate along magnetic field lines to its footprint in the high latitude ionosphere. They can be recorded in both space as well as ground based magnetometers. Killer electrons are electrons having speed close to speed of light which is which forms the radiation belt of the planet earth so this is your emic now magnetosphere what is magnetosphere it is the region around planet dominated by the planet by the planet's magnetic field rather than the magnetic field of the interplanetary space that is magnetosphere now next is dagger model what is dagger deep learning electromagnetic perturbation model NASA researchers have developed this new computer model known as DAGGER to forecast geomagnetic disturbances and provide a warning for solar storms. So this you know. Next is Magneto Resistance. Nobel laureate Andre Grimm discovered the graphene display in anomalous giant magneto resistance at the room temperature. This is important. Now GMR is the result of electronic resistance of a conductor being affected by magnetic field in the adjacent materials. When materials are magnetized in the same direction, electric resistance in the conductor is low and when in opposite direction, resistance increases. What is the application of GMR? Hard disk drives, magnetoresistive RAM in computers, biosensors, automotive centers, microelectromechanical systems and medical images. This is the uh, application of GMR. This you can remember. Now what is graphene? It is a two dimensional single atom thick layer of carbon atoms in a hexagonal honeycomb, honeycomb lattice structure. It has high surface area, good biocompatibility, strong mechanical strength, excellent thermal conductivity and fast electron transportation. That means it can transfer electricity also. What is the application? It has application in energy, a sensor, biosensor, biomedical, environment treatment, etc. Now new uranium isotope has been discovered whose atomic number is 92 and mass number is 241. It is known as uranium 241. Currently, most of the uranium exists in the form of 238, uranium 238. Uranium 238 means the atomic number is 92, but atomic mass is 238. Atomic number means number of protons present in that at present in that element. So 92 is the atomic number and 238 is the atomic mass for uranium 238. Now the isotope uranium-235 is useful in the nuclear technology, in the nuclear sciences. So if we talk about 99.27% of the uranium exists in the form of uranium-238, uranium-235 has only 0.72% presence and uranium-234 has 0.006%. Now a new uh, isotope has been discovered whose mass number is uranium-231. Now, what are the benefits? It will help in nuclear physics, designing nuclear power plants and models for exploring stars. Next is SOVAC, State of the World Children 2023 report. Who has released this report? By UNICEF. 
what is the title for every child vaccination report for every child vaccination report now it, it is building on global strategies outlined in the immunization agenda for 2030 and gavi strategy 5.0 to promote equity and sustainability and scale up immunization to coverage report presents an agenda to put childhood vaccination first in india digital health platform taco technology enabled community health operation and electronic vaccine intelligence system even increased vaccination coverage while enhancing data entry efficiency so this is important for us next is the big catch up you who unicef gavi gavi i already told you gavi is this one gavi so gavi the vaccine alliance and the bill and melinda gates foundation along with immunization agenda 2030 and other health partners are implementing the big catch up so you should remember what are the agencies that are involved in implementation of this big catch up what is this big catch up its objective is to boost vaccination among children and to reverse the declines in childhood vaccinations driven by covid-19 pandemic it has focus on 20 countries including india with 3 quarters of the children who misses vaccination in 2021 live it will strengthen the healthcare workforce improve health service delivery build demand for ex- vaccines and address obstacles to restoring immunization now shringes vaccine glaco smith klein gsk pharma has launched a vaccine known as shringes to prevent shringles these are caused by the reactivation of varicella zoster virus vzv virus some some viruses that same virus that cause chicken pox those suffering from the diabetes heart disease and kidney disease were at the increased risk of developing shringles because of the weakened immunity shringes aims to prevent shringles herpes zoster and post herpes neura neuralgia in adults age 50 years or more it is the world's first non live recombinant subunit vaccine be given to inter intramuscularly for in two doses it was approved by us food and drug administration and european commission now next is know your medicine this has been released by nada national anti doping agency uh, it is it has developed a know your medicine web and mobile application which aims to create clean sporting environment in india and it is available in both hindi and english next is international prize in statistics indian american c r rao has won this nobel prize at the age of 10 102 years now he has completed the century this prize was established in 2016 by five major statistical organizations american statistical association institute of mathematical statistics international biometric society international statistics institute and royal statistics society it is awarded once a year two years to an individual or a team prize is given for four major achievements including statistics to advanced sciences technology and human welfare so with this we complete our science portion of the april 2023 current affairs magazine now we are going to come up with the culture part tomorrow so be with us and to subscribe in this uh, in this initiative you can use the link provided under the video thank you very much and have a very nice day